Yo, hello everyone, and welcome to another amazing week of Adobe Lives, and it's UK week, yes, whole week of streams from the UK, well at least four days and a bit of shorts and all of that sort of stuff, but anyway, fabulous to have you here, now if you're watching on YouTube, you can do that, there's nothing wrong with watching on YouTube, but you can't get involved with the chat, so come along and join us on be.net slash Adobe Live. And you can talk to such amazing people as Sandrine and Susan and Oliver and Rakansa. I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, and Caroline and Mana and Steve, Kiora Steve, and hello everyone else, of course. And oh, there's so many people in there. And Sean, Guten Tag, Sean. They're all in there. You can chat with all of these amazing people. Incredible. And you can ask me questions as well. Me, Tony Harmer, who will today be continuing on from last week's exercises in kind of creating a flyer in an intro level. OK, so that's sort of what we're doing, learning a few techniques. And of course, I always weave in a couple of things that aren't exactly at the beginner level. So I just need one quick more glug of coffee before I start. Perfect. There we go. So all good to go. So let's see what's going on in the chat already. Hooray for InDesign. Yes, people love the InDesign streams. I did one in the US last week and they seem to love that too. Tim in the chat is saying, we can ask questions. Yes, you can. Absolutely. I'll try and keep an eye on those. How do magnets work? You can ask questions relating to what we're actually doing. But there we go. Fantastic. Right. So let us get into it and just recap on where we were last week. So last week, we created the front of this flyer. So it's for a fictitious town called Great Throppington. Okay. And they run farm and food markets that have been doing very well. They're kind of expanding, actually. And so we put this together. We used a few different techniques to do that. And if you missed last week's, Good news is you can actually get it on demand. So you can go ahead and watch that at your leisure. So today we're going to work on the back of the flyer. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enable it shortly so we can see the front and back. But I'm just going to go ahead and go to that next page. So I'm just scrolling down like so and then Command-0, Control on Windows uh, and 0 to do the same thing, just to fit this. Now, Oliver's saying, Great Shroppington still doesn't exist, if anyone was wondering. No, it still doesn't exist. This is true, but it does have a website. I'm just joking. The, um, no, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. It exists in your hearts. Fantastic. Right, enough of that just for the minute, but we'll get started. So I'm going to try and make this as realistic as possible. Now, I do have a rough guide of the output uh, here, which you're, you're only going to see it in tiny in the little thumbnail at the corner, but there is one here which we're going to be working to. So just something like that. In fact, what I could do is I could actually put that on the screen, although it's not exactly um, the same thing. It's very, very close to it. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this is sort of what we're going to be doing. There's a whole load of different techniques in there. So I'm going to try and make it as realistic as possible, starting from bringing in the information. So I have that as a text file, which I should actually be able to jump to here. This is the sort of thing you might get through. You might get this in an email. OK, you might also get it sent to you as a document or both. You can get all of uh, those things. OK, and by the way, if you in the chat, uh, it looks like Rakanza is saying I started from the middle of the session, I guess it's the second part, Rakanza, but there's still plenty to be learned here. So don't worry. And thanks for catching that, Tim. Also, you're all right. It's available on demand. So all good. So this is how you might get it. You might get something like this. Of course, it's always too text heavy. Yeah, it's very, very difficult to get clients to not do it. So I've used uh, things that I've done before. OK to base this on but everything else in here apart from two things which i'm not going to mention you'll just have to guess uh everything else is fictitious anyway what i'm going to do is i'm not going to copy that out although i could copy that and bring that in i'm going to place it so command d control d to place and then i'm going to go and find that text so here it is the flyer text uh, like so i've got the import options turned on 
So this is what you get if you import uh, RTF text. Okay, similar with a Word document. Okay, you can see here that you have a lot of things that you can do. I'm going to choose to remove styles and formatting from the text and tables because it will make my job a lot easier. Okay, to start with, and everything else there is pretty much fine. But you can see the options that you do have if you want to use them. So this one, just cleaning it out has made it a lot easier. So I'm gonna hit okay, and it comes in on my cursor like so. Now I realize here at this particular point, there was something else I needed to do to this document. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just gonna drop the text down like so. So just drag to drop the text down. There's more text than can be displayed here. So I'm getting a small red marker down at the bottom of the frame there telling me that there's too much content there but that's not a problem the thing i do want to do first of all is actually change the margins for this now on the preceding page or the other side of the flyer i didn't have any margins at all because it was going to be edge to edge image content here however there's going to be text so i'm going to allow a little bit of extra room around this so i'm going to go to the layout menu and come down to margins and columns OK, and then I'm just going to increase all of these to start off with. So I'm going to go all the way up to 16. And the way I could do that is actually clicking this lock icon so that it'll all change at the same time. So 16 all the way around. I'm then going to unlock that and just add a couple of extra millimeters or so down at the bottom. So there you are. It's going to be a bit wider down at the bottom there for the optical centering of that. Uh, I think I'll also add two columns in here as well with a gutter. That's the space in between the columns of three millimeters. And that's fine. So now this document is ready to go. Uh, let's have a quick look at a question in the chat. It's nice to proceed it with a cue there, Sandrine. It makes it really easy for me to see out of the corner of my eye. So thanks for that. Uh, could you import a relatively complex docx file with all the formatting on? Or would it be a recipe for mayhem? It really, <laughs> it really does depend uh, there, Sandrine. It really does. Uh, it could be one or well, go, it could go one way or the other. Uh, but anyway, one of the th I can show you how to fix two of the most common things though, really quickly. Let me just go into this text here. Okay. In fact, do you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to park this off to the side, right? Because that's the text I'll actually use. I'll re-import that text. Okay, I'm going to turn off the show import options because everything else there. So this will come in pretty much raw, like so. So if I bring this in, uh, oh, actually, it's 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 used the pre preferences from last time. But sometimes you get some things like this. You get extra carriage returns in there, like so. You also get people who do this kind of thing. So they do. Oh, that's interesting. That month is there. Instead of having tabs in here, what they might do is do this. Hit the space bar a lot until it lines up with something like that. Yeah, and that's that's a recipe for disaster because those things don't work terribly well. So additional lines, we can deal with all of that. Okay, and things like spaces instead of tabs. And the way we do it, okay, is you select the relevant text. If you want to do it to all of the text, then you only need to select the frame with the text. Command F, that's Control F on Windows, find change. And then we can use these queries at the top of this dropdown. Now, if you are new to InDesign and this, you think this is complicated, then just don't worry too much about this bit, right? This, although what we're going to do is pretty straightforward, but don't get hung up on it. So here we've got a range of different queries, different things InDesign can look for. And one of them is multiple return to single return. Now you don't need to, you knowing about this stuff underneath is useful, but not essential. I'm literally gonna hit change all, okay? And it tells me it's made three replacements. So it's taken out all of those additional character returns. I also have the option here for multiple space to single space. And if I just do change all, it tells me that it's made two replacements and it's done it in exactly the places that I thought it was going to. Okay, so there you are. Those things can be very, very useful indeed. Right, let's bring this text back on to the layout like so. Okay, now some things in here are directions. So headline, right, okay, I know that's going to be the headline. 
So I'll delete that. The body text just there, I'm just going to drop in um, a return there as well. So I've got that one single return, I think, in there. If not, oh no, I've got two. There we go. Uh, come along and join us, la la la. All of this text, those two paragraphs, that's great. Um, then we've got some other directions here and we've got some additional stuff down at the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead then and start working on some of this text. Who's been cursing? <laughs> the, um, oh my word, I've, I've seen publisher mentioned in the chat, please. Hazelnut Horde or a don't miss, they are amazing. I'll have to, <laughs> I'm hoping Tim will save me the chat later so I can look at that. But anyway, right, moving on. So the first thing I want to do is headline. Now, we did have some direction last week from another file. Let's see if I can just pull that forward here and the GT info. So we had some things such as the headline in there, but we made something up for the body text. So let's go ahead and, and use that just here. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead then and change this to Fat Frank, like so. There it is because I typed in fat it was the only thing beginning with fat just there. And that's worked just fine. Just bear with me one second uh, while I check on something from the other side of the screen. There we go with the chat. It's all right. I lost the chat momentarily for a second there. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's make sure that's all good. It is. OK, so we've got the text there as 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 it is as it is at the moment 12 points and it's kind of okay for this i think i'm going to just increase that uh by one point here to 13 let's zoom in on that now some of these characters these ones here with these verticals next to each other when they're very very heavy as this is they can look like one thing at a glance so what i'm going to do is just increase the tracking that's the proportional spacing uh, between each of those characters OK, just a bit here. So I'm just going to increase this okay, to maybe 110 percent like so. And I've just noticed here also this particular icon. That means there's a substitution there for a character and it's an apostrophe. So let's change that like so. OK, well, that tracking just at the moment is a bit too heavy. So I'm just going to dial this down manually. So I've clicked inside the tracking field just here. OK, and I'm just bringing that down just a little bit and that's working a little bit better. I might make a substitution here and see if I'm allowed to do that. Of course, I'd have to run that by a client and let them know that I've changed the and or an ampersand, but I'm sure they'll love it. And then I'm going to center align this text. Now, I can click on this center alignment option at the top here. But a quick shortcut that you might find handy is shift command C to do that shift control C on Windows. Fantastic. So now we've got all of those things together. Let's have a look at the color options here. Now, I haven't actually bought in all of the colors that I need here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if I go back out to the info that we had before, I've got some colors here. So I'm just going to bring this one in. OK, so this is a hex code here, which is a very quick way of dealing with these things. And I'll create some new swatches. So let's do new swatch. And let's just go ahead and change this to this is the unfortunate thing. You don't get a hex code uh, option in there. Right. So there's nothing else you can add that to. So a way I can do that quickly. OK, is to select the text. Like so. And then going to double click on the swatch inside the toolbar just there or the toolbar just at the bottom. And there here, I can enter that as a value and I can add that as a swatch from here. Now, it says it's adding it as a CMYK swatch. This is designed for print, so it's kind of OK to do that. Good stuff. So we've got that one. I can pop back out to the text document. Let's get the amber just here and do that same thing. So just pasting in that hex code. Let's go back out. Might as well do all of these while we're here. And then we've got them. OK, so. I'm just shift tabbing or command tabbing 
between each of these that would be alt tab of course on windows you'll notice that it's changing the colors by the way for the um for the text as i'm doing that but i'm fine with that happening that's all good oh did i add that swatch there we go that's good i've got those five swatches that's grand and then i'll click on the one that i want to use for the text just here excellent Okay, so we have that text set like so. Let's go and have a look at the body text just now. So I'm going to go ahead and select the two paragraphs that we have coming along just next. And hi, Joe, in the chat. <laughs> okay, uh, so I've got these selected. Now, I changed my mind on times, which is what we did last week at the last minute to add for this piece of text on the cover. What I'm going to use here is something called Yursa. So it's just Y-R-S-A, like so. Okay, and that's how I'm going to set this body. However, not at 12 points. I'm going to bring this down to 11 points. Now, as soon as text starts to get smaller, it's an idea to increase uh, the interlinear space or the leading. So I've just pop that just up just a shade to 14. So it's only a small amount. Okay, but brought that up like so. And at this point, we need to switch to the paragraph options. So what I want to do is create a style for this. I'm going to go ahead and click on this icon next to where it says basic paragraph plus. I'm going to choose new paragraph style. I'm going to call this GT body. Like so based on no paragraph style, so it's not going to take any information and if you've watched streams with me before on InDesign, you will probably know that I tell you never, ever, ever to base anything on basic paragraph because your definition in your version of the application may be very different to somebody else's. So it can go terribly, terribly wrong. OK, so GT body based on no paragraph style. Next style is the same style. OK, like so. And Joe's asking in the chat, is Throppington a real place? or from the Tony edition of UK Rose 2023. It's the latter, Joe. Uh, <laughs> exists in my mind. It's in Tononia. Uh, does Great Troppington also have a steam fair? It does now. <laughs> anyway, right. Basic character formats. Yes, so a light. Size 11 point. 14 points. Uh, leading just there. Kerning. All of those things are just fine. They're absolutely fine for me. I think that's good. We'll go to indents and spacing. And I'll try and move the dialogue over to the side here because we've got two paragraphs there and they are super, super close together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of space after just between the two, just enough of a break there. And I think two millimeters is almost a whole character line there, but not quite. I think that's going to work pretty well. As I said, it's quite common for clients to give you all of this information to way too much really to go on to uh, something like this. But you, these are the things that you actually have to deal with. So I'm going to say OK to that one. OK, so there we are. We've got that. Now, did this have a style at the top here? It did not. So let's go and fix that. So we're going to create another new paragraph style. This will be called GT. Uh, page copy or page heading i'll just call it page hd just for now because we've got something separate for the beginning i'm just going to go to spacing here and add a little bit of space after that one okay, so perhaps just a little bit more for the heading and hit ok which means now i can get rid of that temporary blank line that i used earlier on so there we go uh, let's have a quick catch up on what's going on in the chat. So there's lots of things about Great Throppington. It has a tiny model village, likely a murder every week. It does. It's, it does. Absolutely. That's as most British villages do. Uh, some chat about restream chat. Uh, next edition would have Tony's voice on the sat nav. It's already available. Uh, and a folk festival too. There we go. So there we are. We've got the body text sat there. I'm kind of okay with that at the moment. However, I'd also like it down in a column down the side because we have here um, some band dates, okay, that we're going to be showing. And they're important. They're a new development for the markets where they're carrying on with food and music into the evening. 
after the market closes out at 4 p.m. So I'm going to want to change some of that. So I'm going to go ahead then and change this text frame. So I've hit escape to leave the text just for the moment. You could also just click the selection tool at the top of the toolbox. Okay, and then command B or control B to access the text frame options. I did say Tononia, um, by the way, EV in the chat. Tononia is a fictitious country in my LinkedIn learning courses but there. And it has got a folk festival. It's awesome. It's a cowpunk festival. It's really good. Uh, so columns, I'm just going to increase the number of columns here. Okay, to two. And you'll see that immediately the text has jumped out. I'm going to match the margins here or the columns on the page. So drop this down to three. So it's pretty tight. Okay, but two, two columns with a gutter of three. I'm going to hit OK. Right, and that's fine. How do we deal then with the heading? Now the heading is there. Well, what we can do is we can select that heading. And in fact, we could click anywhere inside the heading. We don't have to select the whole thing because what we're going to do is a paragraph level thing. So we're going to go to the paragraph style at the top. We're going to click there and we're going to choose style options. OK, Joe's just going into a tunnel. <laughs> Let us know when he's going one stop away from Shoppington. Oh, dear. Right. So there's a really cool option inside of InDesign, which works really, if you, especially if you're working on a publication like a newspaper or a magazine where you have col columns for your text, but you want something to break across those, like a headline, perfectly natural one thing to want to do in a paper. So we have here this option, span columns. Okay, now at the moment it says the default, which is a single column, but I'm going to change that to span columns. And you'll notice immediately, because preview is turned on, that this now spans the columns below. OK, now I've got spacing here, OK, for the span. So you can do things spacing before and after the span in case you want to adjust anything uh, there. So if you did have something and you wanted a span to be spaced differently afterwards, so if I just start increasing that, you can see exactly how that works, but I'm going to zero that uh, back out. OK, so now we have that. I'm just going to change the actual paragraph spacing just a little bit as well, just to tighten that up a shade. In fact, I've dropped that right the way down because of the span. OK, and I'm going to hit OK. So now we've got that text running nicely down the side there, I think. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the remaining text here and I'm just going to apply the body style to it just for the moment. I can choose that from the menu just here like so. And that's all nicely modified. <laughs> and we've got all of that good stuff. Now there are some things that don't actually need okay, to be in columns. So the information that goes at the bottom of the page for example which currently is outside of the columns we have here okay and maybe some of the other stuff down here so what we're going to do is we're going to break this frame so i'm going to go down i've deselected the text here got my selection tool and i'm just going to bring this up to the bottom of this column like so and then i'm going to click the overflow text icon, which brings me the text, everything that's not in the frame at the moment. And then I can just click and drag that out like so. OK, so I've got a bit more text there. Now I can expand this as much as I need to. The text isn't in the best order for me to work with, so I'm going to rearrange it. And I'm going to do this using a couple of trick, well, basically tricks and techniques using other parts of InDesign. So I'll do a quick save on this just to make sure it's updated. And also just in case uh, Annika Argwal pops up in the chat. <laughs> but there you go. Right. So I've got this. The way I'm going to work with the text is I've just double clicked to access the text. Now that selects all of the text, the frames here. If you are new to InDesign, these are now threaded. It means that the content of one frame where it overflows moves into another frame. And the easy way you can tell that 
is by this small icon rather than a plus or it being empty there's a small rightward arrow in there that means this frame its content goes somewhere else and on the other frame if i select that you'll see that this small part of the frame here has a right pointing arrow the text coming in to it and hopefully uh, that makes sense so i want to work with this text but i want to work with the whole lot without actually worrying about the layout and the way i can do that is using the story editor or story mode if i do command y that would be control y on windows i get a whole separate window and when you're doing long form work yeah not forms but when you're doing long document work or anything like that this is super super useful to work with because it takes away all the confusion you can full screen it if you want to you can also change the appearance of it. Normally, I have mine so it looks like a computer screen from the 1980s uh, with green text on a black background because it frightens the people who work here and they won't come and bother me if they see that because they think I'm coding. But anyway, that's by the by. That's available in the preferences, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the band dates just here. Okay, so I'm just having a look at the text there. I've got the band dates heading and I've got all of this stuff. Oh, there's a thing that shouldn't be broken there i think i noticed that before so let's just grab all of that stuff now i can actually move this around inside the story editor you might have noticed there's a small t next to my cursor okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to click and drag that up and then drop it here you can see the cursor following me around and just move that now i didn't do that terribly well because i've actually gone over the top of that v but i can quickly correct that like so and this of course needs to be on a separate line so let's just drop that down there perfect so now we've got those in the right place now we should actually see that uh, updating here on the actual document itself so that's working kind of fine we can also see all of the overset text here and i'm happy enough uh, with that just for the moment i might just remove some of these extra lines just there that i didn't clear uh, before okay there we go and then i'm going to close the story editor you can also keep that open it doesn't matter now, oliver andrew's saying i remember green screens yes it does though honestly it works a treat in, in here because if anyone comes in and sees that the screen is green with lettering on it and me typing they just think Oh, no, he must be really thinking about what he's doing. <laughs> Naughty Tony. Anyway. Right, so we've got all of this stuff here. Now, we've got this text. Of course, this frame is following different directions to the frame above. All right, so this the frame here isn't split, but this one is. What I'm going to do here is grab this text. Okay, now there's a few things that perhaps uh, need resolving just in here but we'll go with it anyway we'll pretend we know nothing about those things with the text there selected i'm going to choose table and convert text to table that's going to ask me a question okay so if i just choose this option it's going to say what separates the columns tab is what i'm going to choose you can choose other things if you know that's what separates them but here it happens to be tabs and in some cases more than one and the row separator paragraph. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I've got this table which looks dreadful just at the moment, but that's because there are more columns than they need to be because of the tabs. So clearly that's not worked very well. So I need to resolve that. The quickest way to do it is to undo. OK, and then go to the text itself. And just select all of the bits between the date and the name and just hit one single tab in there. It doesn't matter about how they line up because the table is going to resolve that. So I'm just moving these things. Love the dancing foxes. And here we go. <laughs> so I'm just dropping a tab in here. I'm not worried about if it breaks a line or any of that sort of stuff. You really just have to trust InDesign to do the right job for you. And it will. Yeah so there we are so just tabbing through those i know it's not the most exciting thing 
to be doing but i'll tell you what it's good work and the green man ukulele assembly also awesome so even though i'm between frames indesign still sees it as one text object right so i can do this uh, do you know what carol i could just use tabs to do this but i've got a couple of other things that i want to show from a teaching point of view and if i just wanted the text it would just be tabs but that's not what i'm actually going to do just now so but that's a good point uh, to raise in the chat okay so now i have everything the way i would like it to be so i'm going to select all of these items here and then once more table convert text to table i'm going to use those options and here we are we have everything now set out in a table but we've got work to do on that table so first thing we could do is this is a very very generous amount of space indeed to be given to the dates and you could say too much now instinctively most people who've worked with tables before tend to go to the line that's dividing these things up as i'm doing right now and you have this double-headed arrow which indicates you can move it in those directions but when you start to drag you notice that what indesign actually does yeah is it expands the table so the way to get around that is to hold down shift which will only move that dividing line so there we are that's working pretty well in there although these red dots are like the overflows from a text frame it means there's not enough room uh, for those to be there so let's just back that off just a little bit and another way you could actually do this is numerically if i just go to the top of the table here and just hover over that right hand column you'll see i get a small downward arrow if i click on that it selects that entire column and then I can play with things numerically, okay, up at the top here. So I could, for example, set the width. So you can see I've got options for the width and the height here. So if I brought that down maybe to 10 millimeters, you can see that's not quite enough for the date just there. Although another thing that would be at play here, which you can also work with, is the padding around the cell uh, as well. So I'll just undo that one, but just so you can see the how that works so first thing then i'm going to do is i'm going to select the entire table just here so i've just clicked inside of one cell and i've just dragged down to the bottom another way you can achieve that because there's always more than one way in indesign is to right click and choose select okay and then table that's another way you could do exactly that thing. Sean in the chat is saying that's nice. It's like Excel. It's got a lot in common with those those sort of table operations uh, there, Sean. It really has. So we've got all of those things there. The first thing I want to do here is change the type a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at how the type is set here. So at the moment, we've got that at 11 on 14. I'm just going to bring that down to 10 just there like so that's going to be too small so i'm going to change it to 10.5 let's have a quick look that's just a little bit better i think that's working kind of okay in there yeah i think that that will be just fine okay and then i'm going to start making some changes in other places so this here where it says march i'm going to drag across both of those cells and then click this icon to merge the cells and that command if you need to use the menu system is also available there you'll find it under the table menu to get to that so i've merged that together now i'm going to create something called a cell style so it's like a type style but it will work okay with a particular cell in a table so it'd be very useful for me to do and I can do that while a table is selected. You'll see the control strip at the top here. By the way, I'm using the Essentials Classic workspace so that I get that control strip. I'm going to click here and choose New Cell Style. So I'll just call this one Month, like so. Okay, it's not based on anything else. You can have hierarchies in there. Now, I don't have a paragraph style for this, so I'm going to make one right now. So I'm going to choose new paragraph style so this is a bit inception like at the moment because i'm working in another part of the uh interface here 
while I'm already engaged in another one. But it's one of the beautiful things about InDesign. And I'm just going to call this month TXT for text based on GT body, because that way if that changes, then everything else can change. So let's see what style options we've got here. Well, we've only got light just here. That's going to be a bit awkward. So I think what I'll do is I'll change this to Fat Frank. So we'll change this to Fat Frank. That's just heavy in there. And 10.5, that's working pretty well. Let's change it to 11. So I'm looking at it through the little gap in between here. That's fine. Pretend that's okay. And then I'm going to sort of work through these things. So this is where I can change my cell insets if I wanted to add some more spacing around things. Actually, at the moment, that's the last thing I want to add uh, just here. Okay, I can change things about how it's presented inside the cell and more besides. I'm going to come down to strokes and fills. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose okay, one of my earlier colors. Now, even though the preview is on, it won't actually show me this part just at the moment. But I don't want it to be fully that color. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 20% tint of that color. And when I hit OK and just click here oh it's not applied to that particular cell that's one of the reasons it's not showing me so let's go ahead and choose that we'll choose month like so and then there you go we've got all of that just there it's not strong enough for me so i think what i'll do is i'll go ahead and edit that style by clicking here and choosing style options down to strokes and fills and let's maybe increase that to i don't know, let's go to 40 percent of that that's working pretty well just there. So now what I can do is I can merge the other month cells just here. Okay, like so. And then I can click inside those cells or just use the arrow to the right. So this is similar to the option that we had before with the cells vertically. And then just apply that style to them. So that's how we can do it from the menu system. Now, at the moment, that's telling me there's an override on there. So I can click here and then choose clear overrides, and it will make it exactly the same as the one above. I'm just going to click inside the May cell just here, because this is another way that you can actually apply this or many, many other things. I'm going to hold down the command key. That would be Control on Windows and hit Return. OK. And this gives me quick apply. Now I can see that the next item down is the cell style month. So I'm just going to hit return and that's it. It's done in one go. However, I need to clear that override again. So if I just do clear overrides for that, oops, it was still in text. Didn't notice that. So go to the cell style and just clear overrides. And there we are. That bit's done perfectly. Okay. So what we need is just a little bit more room for this cell uh, or this table to work. So I've just brought this down like so. Now, typically, this would be some other form of heading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to the GT page heading just there. Of course, that spans columns, but then make a new paragraph style based on that. So I'm going to call this inflow. HD, so inflow heading and inflow because it's in the flow of the text. So, first thing I'm going to do is make it not span columns just there. There you go. So, it goes back up to the top. For my alignment, I can go into the options here in indents and spacing. Centered is just fine. Okay. And everything else there is good. Let's just check that this is based on GT page HD because if something changed, like the color, I'll only need to change that okay, inside of there and it would inherit. However, I think I might actually change the character color for this particular style anyway. So I'm just going to make this slightly lighter like so. And then I can hit OK for that. Just do a quick update save just there. Let's have a look how we're doing. We've got about 20 minutes left. Uh, did Summerfield put two M's in their name to avoid an illegal rankles with the co-op? <laughs> yeah, let's say yeah. <laughs> let's say yeah for that. By the way, I've just noticed 
that the um, text here has got some awkward hanging uh, hanging um, dashes there, which I might actually change, and also some hyphenation. So all I'm going to do to correct that is just click inside that paragraph, go to the style options, okay, and then come down to hyphenation and say don't hyphenate, like so. Okay. Now, there are a couple of other issues. If we get time, we can address those because now there are large gaps appearing uh, in that text uh, that perhaps we don't want. In fact, if we go to those options right now, let's go to the style options here, just so you can see them. Right, we have some options for how text is going to be dealt with. So if we decided that this text was going to be justified, which some people do ask for. So let's go ahead and go to that so let's just say left justify that's actually looking pretty much not too bad actually but we can go here and we can change things such as the minimum maximum and desired word spacing we can also do that with letter spacing so if i push this uh, up a little bit if i push the maximum here up to 10 let's just say or 12 let's say that's the most i want any letter spacing to occur I can then increase this letter spacing like so. Can you see that? If you look at the last line on that um, first paragraph, and in fact, the one after, you can see how that's changing as well. Okay, so far, so good on that. Let's go ahead then and add a couple of other things. Now, something that is missing here, uh, I've, now, I've also just realized, is the image, right? So... What I want to do is, who wants to align my title? Jeff does. <laughs> you want to left align it? Okay, fine. You can do whatever you like. It's grand. There's an image that needs to go in here. So what I'm going to do is place that image uh, in just a wee while. But first of all, we'll go ahead and deal with the text. So a lot of the stuff at the bottom here, okay, is additional info. Now, we can still deal with that separately. And I'm going to go ahead and use my story editor, Command Y, Control Y, to do that. And let's just see. Here, immediately, I can see, even without looking at the text, right, the fact that it says GT body is applied to that paragraph, that there's an extra line. So I can delete that extra line. Okay, like so. And I can see the last thing that's on here, okay, is uh, the web address at the bottom. So... It's handy to keep jumping into and out of the story editor because it gives you clues to all these things. I can hold down my command key here, by the way, and just stretch the text frame down uh, if I want to now at this point, now that I know it's there. Let's just move that whole thing. So escape to come out of the text. We'll bring that down there like so. Right, that's good. So we need to make some changes here. I'm going to go from the bottom up now. So just here, this is information that basically tells us about the company that runs uh, the markets for Great Troppington. So I'm going to select that. Now, at the moment, it's GT body, but I'm going to create a new paragraph style uh, called GT small print. There, like so. Okay, it's based on GT body. So if the font changed from GT body, everything else would change as well. This can come right the way down here, I think, to about nine points, something like that, maybe even smaller. I might go to seven just there because it really is the fluff on the bottom. It's sort of legal obligation uh, territory just there. And that's working out all right. I'm going to make sure that that is center aligned, I think. So let's just do that. Say so center aligned for that. I could see if we could get just a tiny bit more out of that text. Seven's too little, eight is too much. So how's 7.5 going to go? That's going to go perfectly as it happens. So let's hit OK. That's done. Now, I also want to realign this text. It's just habit for me to go into the, or reorganize this text. It's habit for me to actually go into uh, the text itself and just use the option here to just move things around. There we go. So let's just drop that down like so there we are so we've got great drop into markets we've got the web address and whatnot just there okay so that stuff actually at the bottom there i'm going to move this frame upwards click 
and then just sample or bring that into another frame all on its own because this actually goes outside of the margin it's not part of the main content at all Let's zoom in on that and tighten that up a little bit similar spacing just slightly more at the bottom than there is at the top but similar uh, otherwise uh, when did cc library paragraph styles exist 2013 joe i think 2014 you could add them to no, 2015, I think. 2015, I'm not sure now. I'm just pretty sure it's I'm pretty sure it's 2015, but I'm not 100% sure. But around about then, so it's been quite a while. Uh, so you can add them. Right, so I've got those things. Perfect, that's really good. Now, it's telling me here that I need to add a couple of icons. So let's go ahead and do that because I have them. So these are placed files, GT icons. If I just show you what they look like, just there. I'm going to choose show import options because it's an illustrator file with two layers. If I choose open. I can actually see the layers here. Now, what I'm going to do is, first of all, in the general options, I'm going to say crop to the bounding box. That means just the content here. Layers, I am going to turn off mail like so. You can see it's now just going to import the web layer from this illustrator document. I'm going to hit OK, Let's zoom right in. So I'm just holding down uh, spacebar and command, that is spacebar control on Windows, just to zoom in there, and then just the spacebar just to pan around. I'm basically going to drop this in at roughly the size of the text, like so. Great stuff. I'm then going to cut that to my clipboard, start editing this text. So I've highlighted web icon just there. And then I'm going to paste that in, like so. Great, that works pretty well there. I'm going to hit Escape because I can still work with this. It's not quite where I want it to be. It's just a bit high. So I'm just going to just bring that down. I just hit the down arrow once on my keyboard. Great stuff. Double-clicking again to get to the text. And then selecting this, like so. Let's move along to the email icon part there and paste then hit escape okay to leave the text but what i can do is i can click on this icon here and then right click on it and i'm going to come down to object layer options now if you were watching last week you already saw me do this with an illustrator file but just in case you didn't then you're seeing it right now i'm going to change the web option here to mail like so now I'm going to hit OK. Now at the moment, OK, what's happening here is the mail icon is wider than the web icon. So I'm just going to increase the frame there. And you'll notice that because it's an anchored object, it's just snapped pretty much to that content. Let's just have a quick look. There we go. Now I could here just pull that in slightly. There you go. And that's pretty much on the money. So we've got those icons. Another quick update save there. And also... This text here has got way too much uh, of, uh, of a space above it. So let's just pop into the options for that. So first thing we'll look at is spacing. So there's nothing spaced before just there. Okay, uh, we'll just have a couple quick looks on here. Let's just change the leading for that because this is quite small. The interlinear space there or the leading can change with it. That's handy. So we'll just reformat this frame. I've long pressed here without moving, so I can go ahead and change this like so. There we go. Good. That's working uh, so far. And then we can start working with this stuff here. So there's a few things. Footer content doesn't need to be in uh, this particular story. You can see what's happened just there because the other stuff has jumped up to meet it. How do I fix that? Well, I simply right click at the end of the line here. Okay. Or do, let's do it from the menu. If I go to type here, insert break character frame break, that will force the other content into the frame. There we go. And just delete the extra line that came with it. So those things are fine. This needs to be another instance of the heading. Now let's go ahead and use that so we had our extra heading so we do hd there we go page hd nice 
So we've got that lot just there. This needs to be modified just a little bit, I think. And also, we could see if we could drop that onto a single line there. So let's create a new style based on GT body here. I'm just calling this GT centered. This is going to come down just a shade as well. And thing is, if I do that, that's actually going to get too small just there. But anyway, we'll go with just for the second. So we'll choose that to center aligned. I'm actually going to make that slightly larger. Go there with the 11. Okay, that's good. We'll just change that to visit us at so people know it's just an address. So we're just making on the fly modifications. Got a couple more little bits to do here in the next nine minutes. I do love a little bit of timing pressure like that. It's good. So we've got an image to come in. So let's go ahead and create a frame for that. I'm going to tap F. So I now can work out the size that that's going to be. So I'm going to draw it in between these two elements just here, like so. Great stuff. I'm going to create a text wrap for this. Now, I've got some text wrap controls here. Jump object. You can also use the shortcut Alt Control W or Alt Command Option Command W to access the text wrap options. So I'm going to say jump this object. So the text will literally jump over the top of it. Let's go ahead then and we'll maybe add one millimeter beneath it. Okay, so that's what it's going to do. Now at the moment, you won't see any change, but when I move it up across the text, you'll suddenly see that it's very different. So let's bring that in like so. We've got a little bit more room required just there. So let's try and change that jump just there. So I'm going to go back to those controls. Normally, I wouldn't close them. I'd normally leave them open, but I'm working on a smaller screen area than slightly normal. Just there. That should now be... There we go. Okay. We'll just bring that down just a bit there. I think the frame is going to need to be just a fraction smaller. So let's make that happen. And now the band aids aren't in the right place. So we know what to do. Click there. This time we're going to create a different kind of break character. We're going to use a column break, like so. So there you go. That's kind of forced that nicely into place. Then we can just mess with the options here there we go and it's going to be a little bit of backward and forward between those things i don't know quite why that's not um not lining up exactly as it should let's just try moving that in and go a bit further yeah for some reason that's acting up just a little bit just there but we can resolve that in just a wee while let me get the image in so we're at least completed on that I'm going to bring this down as much as I can here. And one of the options I do have inside of the frame options, so if I go Command B uh, to go back to those, is I can actually choose here in uh, this option at the top. There should be an option. No, there we go. Balance columns. Yeah, so that should try and balance those things out. But I've got a little bit something stopping that going over. I don't quite know what it is. Oh, I do. It's the spacing on this, but we can come back to that later on. That's fine. Let's get this image in. So Command D with the frame selected. So go into here, mark it blurred. That's fine. There are no further options for that. And what I think I'm going to do is just fit this to the frame proportionally to start off with. And then I'm going to nudge that up like so. It kind of works in there. That's good for now. And then just make a couple of small changes here. So let's bring this in there. I'd have to do a little bit of work just here and find out what it is that's stopping uh, that. I think it might be something to do 
with the leading inside of there. But I'll have to work that out separately. Uh, for now, though, what I want to do is draw a rectangle. So I've tapped M on my keyboard to do that, drawing a rectangle like so. I'm then going to draw another rectangle, and I'm eyeballing this one around like that. So a second rectangle just there. I want to align this to the center of the page. So I'm going to choose Align to Page from these alignment options just here. There is also a panel for that where you can do exactly the same thing as well. And if you don't see it on your layout, it lives in the window menu. I'm just going to choose Align Center so it's aligned in the right place there. So zoom in here and just add a little bit to the top, uh, just a bit, because it's just a bit too close. I'm going to select both of those rectangles. I'm going to change their fill and stroke over. So I'm basically going to click here inside of the toolbox, this curved arrow. You can also use the shortcut Shift X just so you can see what's going on for the moment. So they're still both selected. I have another panel called the Pathfinder. Again, it lives in the menu, uh, actually comes in with the Align panel. And I'm going to choose the punch, the smaller shape out of the larger shape because the smaller shape is newer, so it's on top. And there you go, that's punched out nicely. And I'm going to change the nature of this frame. Okay, so I'm going to uh, right click on this and say content graphic. So now it can load a graphic into it. Let's place another graphic. So inside of the file there, I've got a pattern. There it is, food pattern. Let's bring that in. Show me a preview of that. That's just fine. So there's that pattern. Now, at the moment, it's on black. So I just want to get rid of that to no fill. That's for the content, the frame itself, not the stuff that's there. That's just a tad too strong. So what it can do is change how opaque it is. So I've got a small slider just here where it says 100%. I'm just going to bring that down maybe to about 40%, somewhere in that sort of ballpark. At 37, that's working nicely. However, the content at the bottom here, okay, that's not exactly the way I would like it to be. Just this frame here. So let me just send this to the back. So if I right click, do arrange center back, then I can click on this frame. And what I'm going to do is simply fill the frame with paper. So it will then knock that out uh, from the back. As a guy, on YouTube, <laughs> some videos about it, and he's like, right, yeah, and thanks, Oliver, that's cool. Uh, I'm going to actually resize this box. So I'm going to do it by making sure that I'm changing the size of the box from the center using this grid just here. Then I'm just going to change the width by clicking in this field and using my arrow keys to kind of bring that out so it's similar to the one above. And that's something I could also do by dragging the handles on the side and holding down the option key or alt key to align from the center. In fact, that would be a better way to do it in this particular instance. Okay, so there are still some things in here that need uh, to be changed. There's this thing at the top here which needs to be resolved, and we've got a gap almost equivalent to that, okay, uh, on the other side. So there's clearly something there that needs to be needs to be tweaked and modified so i need to just work out which thing is triggering uh is triggering which and it might be there's an extra line just there there you go <laughs> so if i delete that extra line let's just make sure there's no other extra lines i should perhaps now be able to get that to just come up to the side not quite so i still got a little bit of work to do to make that work okay but you can see how We've managed to bring everything else in. We've made a bunch of different styles here uh, to control it. If I just tap W, you'll see the finished uh, thing or the nearly finished thing uh, just there with everything in it. So we've added a table. We've made some changes. Oh, just one quick thing. I'm going to just remove the strokes from the table or actually change their color. When you select a table like so, okay, like that, okay, you can actually change things about the strokes. There's a lot more to be learned. Uh, about that but i'm just going to change the stroke color here to paper yeah and that 
and I just need to do that in a couple of other places. I'm determined to do it. I know I'm at time, uh, but what I'm going to do is just click these lines, which are the lines in between, and then change all of those to paper. And so we get these nice, neat little gaps, like so with the color in the background, all of that good stuff. And once I've resolved this balancing issue just here, which might involve, involve me bringing that out into another frame, okay, then everything there works. There you go. Fine. I hope you've enjoyed uh, coming along uh, today and you've picked up plenty. We needed a grep stream. <laughs> oh, that was, I don't think you get too many people for that one, uh, Sandrine. Uh, but yeah, an EPUB stream. Oh, that's, yeah, that would be fun. Uh, if I wanted to create a graphic novel, InDesign would be the better option to stitch it together, probably. Uh, yeah, but that's it. Mission accomplished. Indeed. Fantastic. The Pathfinder doesn't get enough screen time on a daily live. It did with me last week. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, baseline grid, we could do one on that. That's fun. We'll have that in one. But there you go. For now, though, we are done. Don't forget, exciting content this week because we've got streams tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday with two of my fave people, Joe Allen, uh, of course, and the lovely, lovely uh, Tiggs Rice. And they'll be sharing their love of Japan and things about their recent visit. And they're both excellent photographers. So there's a lot to be had in there. But for now, that's it. We're done. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.
Bye.